Hello and welcome. As you can tell by the title, I'm the obsessed movie man, OMM. The holiday season is here once again, and is there any other better time than that? <laughs> Halloween, cough Halloween! There are countless classic Christmas films out there to choose from, to the point where some might be debatable if they are Christmas films, like Gremlins, which I've already reviewed, and Die Hard. But I'd like to offer this film as a possible example, Batman Returns. It's the sequel to the 1989 Batman film, directed by Tim Burton and starring Michael Keaton. Batman is no stranger to Christmas stories, or songs for that matter, but a movie about it is another thing. It'll be dark, sure, but how dark could it possibly be? It's Tim Burton working on another Christmas project. I can't wait to be enamored with it. What the hell? I... uh... huh? Speechless. That's what this film has done to me. It has left me speechless. You know when you find a film or a book that you think is going to give you a pleasant feeling inside and have a happy ending, and it bursts out of your stomach leaving a dark vacant hole? That's what this film is. It's an emotional roller coaster from hell. So we better get the plot out of the way. An abandoned and disfigured individual known only as the Penguin emerges in Gotham City to find out who he really is while also having a secret agenda of his own. Helping him is a corrupt businessman named Max Shrek, who recently killed his secretary Selina Kyle, who in turn goes insane from the experience and becomes Catwoman, and with all this happening, you find yourself asking, WHERE THE HELL IS BATMAN?! It's unbelievable, really. It seems like there's even less of him in this film as opposed to his appearance in the first one. That could be frustrating to fans, but it does show how much of a shadowy figure he is. Plus, we get a lot of insight into the villains, which tends to be the greater parts of the Batman films. Michael Keaton still does a really good job as Batman. He's quiet and unassuming as Bruce Wayne, which makes it work out so well because you could never believe he's really the Batman. Still, there is that pesky addition given to him where he does indeed kill people. What happens when you have a day where you just can't get rid of a bomb? Shove it into a man's pants and watch him explode! That's Keaton's Batman for you. Just to make it clear, I didn't like it in the Burton films, and I don't like it in the current films. Alright? Good? Let's continue. But how should we start this Batman film? Maybe something similar to the first film where we slowly reveal the Bat logo? Or how about attempted baby murder? I'm not joking. Penguin's parents throw him into a lake that washes him away underneath the sewer. Merry Christmas, folks! You thought the first Batman film was dark? How about crazy circus performers, rocket shooting penguins, cats that bite your fingers and bring you back to life? I feel like I need a drink just to describe it. But where does all this sad and gloom come from, you might be asking? What makes this movie such a depressive experience? Well, hold on. I'll get to that. Right after a drink. it comes from the director himself, Tim Burton. I'm not here to trash the guy. He's made so many films that I love, but what I'm getting at is that this is not a Batman movie. This is a Tim Burton movie, which Batman happens to be in. There's the creepy clown motif, characters that are unbelievably dark, and the overall pure insanity. You could tell that Burton was probably restrained a bit when making the first film, and was then given free reign to do whatever he wanted for the sequel. The end result? Penguin is probably the most bizarre character in this film. He's made to look like some sort of bird-human hybrid, which I guess is a great coincidence that he was found in the sewers by actual penguins to raise him. What are the odds? He's very disgusting, with nasty teeth, long nose, and flippers, but at the same time, it's a fantastic design, which was done by the great Stan Winston. It's so good that it got nominated for an Academy Award for Best Makeup and won an award for the makeup from the Saturn Awards. And who is helping with the costumes? Why, my dear possible relative Mary Vogt. You know, the one from Son of the Mask? Well, that certainly took me by surprise again. So Penguin and Max Shrek are working together. Shrek needs a mayor who will grant him a favor, so he's setting up the Penguin to be that mayor. Although Penguin has his own plan. You wanna know what it is? Infanticide. That's right, kids. Celebrate Christmas with Batman Returns and a happy meal at McDonald's. Yeah, that was a thing that was going to happen, but McDonald's immediately pulled out when they discovered the details of the film. I forgot to talk about Shrek, played by the genius Christopher Walken. He's not as, um, Walken-y as you'd expect, but he's still a lot of fun. As for the character of Shrek, he's not a character from the comics, 
but his name is most likely a reference to the actor Max Shrek, the one who played the vampire Nosferatu. Classic Burton! There was a deleted element that was in an earlier version of the script, where it would have been revealed that Shrek and Penguin were brothers, which I think would have been an interesting thing to explore, but what we got in the end was alright, I guess. Catwoman is a whole different story. So far, every one of the Batman villains by Burton has been immensely different from their comic counterparts. She survived an attempted murder by Shrek, has a nervous breakdown, and decides to be Catwoman and, um, do something. I mean, she's destroying Shrek buildings, but then wants to protect people, but also wants to kill Batman. It, it, it's so strange. And a lot of it is hard to watch. It's gut-wrenching to see her destroy her apartment in anger. Ho, 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 ho. Like the majority of Burton's films, the sets are spectacular to look at, with the Batman Returns one having the same foreboding element as the first film. They were done by Bo Welch, and there's a lot of unique architectural designs to them, some of which highlights Burton's fascination with German Expressionism. The film also has the greatest speech ever written, which is given to Penguin, in front of a group of penguins who are attached to rockets. Move over, Patton! Penguin's in charge now! Every time I've watched this, I laugh. It's so incredibly weird that it's actually very funny. But you want to know what the biggest crime of this film is? Where's Billy D. Williams as Harvey Dent? He set up as the DA in the previous film, so what happened to him? Where'd he go? Well, originally Dent was going to be in the film, and was to have been scarred at the end, leading towards a sequel. But they cut him out. Come on, Gordon's in the film, why not Dent? Isn't this what you want to watch during the holidays? Penguin groping women and biting noses, the tragedy of the Batman-Catwoman relationship, kids getting kidnapped by creepy circus people, all during what is supposed to be the happiest time of the year! And yet I still like this film. I mean, while it's very disheartening, there are some really cool elements to it. The makeup, the fight scenes, the production design. As much as I joked before, the characters are really cool, and you clearly understand where they're coming from even if they are different from the source material. If you like Tim Burton's original take on Batman, then you should have no problem here. It's not a better film, but it's still, well, an interesting film to watch around the holidays. Recently, there was a pitch for a comic series called Batman 89 that would have acted as a sequel to Returns and would have ignored the Schumacher films. The cover art looked great, but sadly DC declined to make this into a series, and that, out of all of this, is the saddest thing that can be said in this review. It makes me so sad that we never got to see where the Burton Batman films could have gone from here. And it makes me even more sad that I didn't get to watch a positive Batman Christmas special. Hey, it's Basement Batman, a character I haven't used in years. How are you doing? I'm Batman. Of course you are. So I guess you're the new Santa for this Christmas episode. I'm Batman. Uh-huh. So, what do you have for me? Wow! It's the first season of Batman the Animated Series, which means it has the episode Christmas with the Joker in it. Thanks, Basement Batman. I only wish I had a better mask to give you. I'm Batman. Well, with that weird exchange out of the way, I'm gonna put this in the DVD player and watch another Batman Christmas special. Happy holidays, everyone, but be careful not to spend it in the sewers. I hear there are penguin people and circus members down there. So long.